All right, here we go. I'm working this problem at a request. Um, this is from the SL book. It's exercise 7H, question number six. And we're going to work through the whole thing here. Um, I believe that this is also found in the HL textbook um, somewhere, but I'm not 100% sure where it pops up. So anyway, uh, we'll go ahead and work through it. HL is not a bad idea for you to look at anyway, uh, just so that you can get the idea of the comparison of the two. All right, so we've got a factory that produces a large number of electric cars. A car is chosen at random from the production line as a prize in a competition. The probability that the car is blue is 0 0.5. The probability that the car has five doors is 0 0.3. The probability that the car is blue or has five doors is 0 0.6. Find the probability that the car chosen is not blue and does not have five doors. Honestly, I think it's a little weird that it has five doors in the first place. That's not very common, but uh, okay, that's what they're saying. So we're going to go with it. All right, so uh, they want us to do both a, uh, I didn't copy the last part of the problem, but they want us to do both a Venn diagram and a tree diagram and then kind of talk about and, and compare the two. All right, so uh, let's go ahead and start with the, the Venn diagram because that's what we learned about first. Okay, so we've got two things going on here. We've got uh, the probability that it's blue so I'm going to label blue as B because that makes sense. And then the next one is the probability that the car has five doors. Uh, I'd like to use a five there, but a five and number would probably be really confusing. So uh, I'm just going to put a D for doors. All right. So that's my Venn diagram. All right. Now, the probability is given to me. It says the probability that the car is blue is 0 0.5. Now, the probability that the car is blue being 0 0.5 is all of this, right? So I could go over here and write the probability of blue equals 0 0.5. And I'll go ahead and do that just so that we can kind of get through. Okay, then it says the probability that the car has five doors is 0 0.3. So that would be all of this. Now, obviously, there's some, some overlap there. So we're going to say the probability of five doors is 0 0.3. And the probability that the car is blue or has five doors is 0 0.6. So that's all of this, right? That's the union. The probability that it's blue or has five doors is 0 0.6. Now, you may be able to go through and kind of reason that out or figure it out. What I would like to do right now is show you how to mathematically do it because you won't always get numbers that are quite as nice as this. And I want you to be able to solve it, use your calculator, whatever else, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna label each of these sections. This section right here, not the whole B, just the section that's just B, which is this right here, okay? So that's gonna be X, okay? I'm gonna label this section right here as Y. And then I'm gonna label the last section right here, the section that is D, but not the intersection, as Z. All right, so now I should be able to use X, Y, and Z to, and X, Y, and Z are representing the probabilities of these areas. So I should now be able to say, well, the probability of Z, B, is 0 0.5. So I'm gonna use this one right here, which means that X plus Y is 0 0.5, right? Because those are the two pieces that make up B. Okay, now D is 0 0.3. So 0 0.3, I'm gonna go, well, that's D, which is this, so that's Y and Z. So Y plus Z equals 0 0.3. Last of all, I'm gonna do B union D. So that would be everything, so that would be all of every that's the yellow that I did before so that would be x plus y plus z equals 0 0.6 now uh, you don't have to work this out right math applications we have our calculators you should be able to use the there's there's an algebraic function for sim, for solving simultaneous equations so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my calculator now and show you how to solve that all right so Let's go.
All right, so here's our fancy semantic calculator, which looks just the same as yours. So I'm going to show you how to use the simultaneous equation solver in case you don't know how to do it. All right, so we're going to go into the menu here. If you look over on the left-hand side, my arrow will show you uh, what's happening on the calculator. So I'm going to click on the menu. Once I go to menu, then I obviously get a menu. I am going to go to algebra because algebra there has the numerical solve, which you are very familiar with already polynomial tools, which you've likely used already. Oh, sorry, this is what happens when I try to do fancy things. And uh, there's this one, which you may or may not have used before, solve system of linear equations. That's what we're looking for. All right, now in the current problem, we had three variables and three equations. All right, so I'm gonna say three equations. Now I'm gonna push tab, and when I push tab, it automatically says, here's my variables x, y, z. You can change those variables if you want, but those are the ones that are typically used, and so you'll notice those are the ones I used in my Venn diagram as well, x, y, and z. Okay, so now we say okay, and now it's gonna give me a space, and in this space, I'm just gonna type the uh, three equations. So I'm gonna go x plus y equals 0.5. Okay, and then I'm going to go down to the next equation. I'm going to go y plus z equals 0.3. I'm going to go down again. And then I'm going to do the last equation, which was x plus y plus z, you can probably do this faster on your calculator than I can do it here, which is 0 0.6. And then once you've done that, lo and behold, you push enter. And look at that, it gives you in alphabetical order, note right here in my main screen here, I'm showing you it, it's solving for x, y, and z. Okay, this therefore is x, y, and zero. It's in, it's in the same order that we typed it here. So if you want it in a different order, you can request that as well. But anyway, uh, the idea here is that you now have uh, solved for x, y, and z, and you actually didn't have to do any of the work other than the setting up of the equations, and that's the important part here. All right, so that's how you use your calculator. Let's go back to the question and uh, wrap up the Venn diagram and start looking at the tree diagram. All right. Welcome back. So now that we've done that, what we're going to do is we're just going to answer the question, right? The final question is find the probability the car chosen is not blue and does not have five doors. So that would be everything, not blue, not five doors, is everything on the outside, okay? So basically that's one minus x minus y minus z, right? And so from what we just did on the calculator, that would be 1 minus x, which was 0 0.3, minus y, which was 0 0.1, and then minus z, which is 0 0.2. Now again, I recognize that some of you would have been able to look at those probabilities up here at the top, and you probably could have done it without this step. Okay, because those numbers are pretty easy, it probably would be pretty easy. I, I know a couple of you did that when we were doing the example in class the other day. So if that's the case, wonderful, that's fine. Uh, if you need a more algebraic way to do it, or if it says show, then you do have to show the mathematical process. You can't just kind of figure it out and, and put an answer down. You're gonna miss a bunch of in, in intermediate points, all right? So once we put this all together, we should get that the probability of not being blue and not having five doors, so not blue and not five doors equals 0 0.4. All right, so that's the first part of the question. It also wants us to do exactly the same thing, but this time use a tree diagram. All right, so that's what we're gonna do next. We'll do a tree diagram. I like tree diagrams. Okay, so the first event is either it's blue or it's not blue. So the probability of being blue is 0 0.5. That was given to us. The probability of not being blue is also 0 0.5. All right, now 
after blue, this is an independent event, as far as we know. The probability that the car has five doors is 0 0.3. That's not really given to us as independent. We'd like to believe it is, but we don't really know. So we're not going to be able to answer that right away. We're not going to be able to put anything else in because we don't know if the probability of having five doors depends on being blue or not. Okay, It's just not something that we can answer right now. So in this case, we're going to need to have an X, Y, Z, and uh, let's go ahead and add in a, a W, what the heck. All right, so this path right here, the first path is representing blue and five doors, right? The next one is blue and not five doors. And then we've got not blue and five doors, and then we've got not blue and not five doors. All right, so in order to figure that out, we're going to set up, again, a system of equations, right? Uh, the information that is given to us is that we have the probability that the car is blue, so we've already actually put that in, uh, the 0 0.5. We also know that the probability that the car has five doors is 0 0.3. So how do I get that? Well, I'm going to take the pieces that would give me five doors and add them together. Okay, so the pieces that would give me five doors would be this one. And, sorry, that's not five doors, I apologize. So let me use it, uh, we'll go ahead and use the yellow. So five doors would be this one right here and this one right here so the top one is 0 0.5 times d okay uh, sorry times x this is what happens when I try to do math without having breakfast all right then I've got not b and five doors right here Okay, so that's 0 0.5 times z, and those should come together to give me 0 0.3. All right, the, the next one is the probability that the car has blue doors or five doors is 0 0.6. So to get the 0 0.6, I want to add together all the situations where either it's blue or has five doors, a combination of that. So I can include, let's see, let's go to a different color here. I can include all of this right here. That's 50%. 50% that it has blue doors. Both the five doors, blue, uh, the blue car. Both five doors and not five doors are both combined in that as long as it's blue. So that's going to be 0 0.5. Okay. I also need to include anything else where it's blue or where it has five doors, which is this one right here. Okay, so that's gonna be 0 0.5z, and that's gonna be equal to that number that we just had, the 0 0.6. Okay, now this one is a little bit easier as far as the mathematics goes, because I should now be able to solve for z, right? I can subtract the 0 0.5, I can divide by 0 0.5. You can put this into a, the equation solver on your calculator as well, but we should then be able to get that z is equal to uh, 0 0.2. And then of course you can take that and put it in up here and you should be able to then get that x equals 0 0.3 and once you have z and x, remember that z and w are complements, right? Either it's d or it's not d. And so if I know z, which is 0 0.2, then w has to be 0 0.8, right? x is 0 0.3, which means y must be 0 0.7, right? And so at this point, you should be able to answer the question, which is find the probability that the car is not blue and does not have five doors. So how do I make sure that both of those happen? I need not blue and I need not five doors. So that's this one right here. 
And so my final answer is gonna be that path, which is 0 0.5 plus, uh, sorry, not plus, times W, and that should be my answer. And notice that W was 0 0.8, so that would be 0 0.5 times 0 0.8, or half of 0 0.8, which is 0 0.4. And so this time I was able to do it without the equation solver on my calculator. Okay, so now you can discuss advantages and disadvantages. That could be any number of things. It could depend on your comfort level, right? Whether you like Venn diagrams or whether you like um, using the tree diagram. It could depend on whether you like having to use the applications on your calculator. If you like using applications on your calculator, well, the Venn diagram would be a good way to go. If you prefer not to do that, if you want the simpler algebra, well, it certainly seems like the algebra over on the tree diagram was a little bit easier. We didn't have to do any simultaneous equations. We just solved for one variable and we we're able to do that. Now, that won't always be the case. That's just how it happened this time. Um, it was a little more difficult to set up the tree diagram, possibly. I mean, just kind of, again, depends on your personal comfort level, right? But um, the one on the right-hand side here, the tree diagram, you needed four variables. And for some people that just freaks them out. And if that freaks you out, maybe that's not the way you wanna go. Though you'll notice that even though there were four variables, the algebra ended up being a little bit simpler in the end. The reason being is because X and Y were complements, right? So essentially Y was one minus X. Z and W were also complements. So W is one minus Z. So even though it looks like we have four variables there, you could actually make that so that there's only two variables, X and Z. And so anyway, you can think about advantages and disadvantages of each. I just wanted to make sure that we talk through the processes and, and help you be able to get through that. All right, so hopefully that's helpful. Hasta luego.